it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We have a much requested tutorial today. A lot of people have asked for me to show them how to sew a binding on using the machine. I love to bind, so I don't do this very often, but I certainly can show you how. What you're going to do is you're going to take your regular binding strips, and we're just going to go through this from the beginning, so it'll be like a, a whole binding tutorial again. So I like to cut my binding, and this is personal preference, but I like to cut mine in two and a half inches. And then before I do anything, I iron them right in half. So I just fold the edges together with the, with the wrong sides together on this. And I iron this all the way. And I do this for two reasons. Um, one, it helps it lay down real nice. And two, when I'm laying the strips together, I, I sew them together so that they have a um, 45 degree angle on them. And it helps me to see where that fold line is, is crossing on there. So let's go ahead and iron the last strip. There we go, a little bit more. I do have a tutorial on how to make this ironing pad. It's on YouTube uh, under Missouri Star Quilt Company ironing board. A lot of people ask about my ironing pad. It's actually made with a piece of flooring and a towel. But uh, you can see how to do that in that other tutorial. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these strips over to the sewing machine. And I have my sewing machine right here. And how I put these together so they lay at a 45 is I open up this fold right here. And I lay this one directly on the cross like this. So it makes like a little cross. I don't bother to cut off my salvage because I leave it sticking out of the edge here and off the edge here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my presser foot right there. And I'm going to sew from here to here. So I'm going to make a, a, a straight, I'm just going to eyeball it and sew from this edge to this edge. You can, um, you can butt them together if you want. The reason I like to do the bias binding is that it actually makes less fabric together so you don't have a big hunk of fabric that um, kind of puffs out your binding. So let's go ahead and sew some of these together. I also really like to chain piece these and I'll show you how I do that. I just sew straight across and then I grab the end of this and bring it around and I lay it right down here in front of my needle and then I lay the next strip across it again putting right sides together and we're just gonna go ahead and cinch that down. We'll do that a few more times so you can see that. So again now I'm gonna um, grab my end open it up, lay it down flat like that, grab the next strip and open it up and put it right here. So it, it kind of makes a X and I'm going to slide that up under that needle and then just sew straight across and let's get one more. We got to do the last one here and then we'll be good to go. I think this is only going to take about um, four strips, but I always cut one more just in case. There's nothing worse than getting to the end of your binding and being short like this much. So we like to make sure we have lots. All right, so now my, all my bindings are sewn together and what I'll do, you can see how they're all um, chain pieced here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut along here with my scissor and clip that thread and do this on all of them. So I'm gonna cut right along. I leave about a quarter of an inch it doesn't have to be particularly straight because you sewed straight. So I'm going to, again, I'm just going to cut along here, clip that, and cut along here. There we go. And now when you open it, see you have that bias binding that works so well and just lays nice and flat. Okay, the big difference between a binding like this and the other binding is how you start it. This is a, a little tumbler quilt I made using our um, tumbler template here at the Missouri Star. This is girly girl fabric and this is part of that line. You can see it right here and I wanted to bring it in in that binding. So the only difference between putting your binding on um, with a machine or by hand is where you sew it. So when you put your binding on by the machine, you're going to sew it onto the back. You're going to bring that around to the front because you want to be able to put a nice stitch on there but because if you do it the opposite way, you don't know where that stitch is going to land. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our quilt over. And um, 
If you're good at finishing a binding that is so great or you have a way you do it, I like to use the binding tool because the, the angles just are hard for me. So um, again, I have to put a, uh, I have to make 12 inches between with the binding tool. And then I start by putting on my, um, my binding here. And I just leave about a 10 inch tail. And this is what you do for, if you're going to use the binding tool. If you don't need the binding tool, oh, more power to you. Holy smoke. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this on on the back. And we're just going to go around and sew it. So we'll head on over to the sewing machine. All right, so we're just sewing this down now. I'm actually not pulling this through. I am... Um, I'm just trying to hold it up here. It's having a hard time like holding up right here. So let me just scoot that over a bit. Let me put this up here. And I want to show you how we get around a corner. It's exactly the same as when you bind it from the from the other side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to stop a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, maybe a half an inch from the end. We're going to pull this out. We're going to put, put our thumb under here and pull this binding so that it meets up with the corner right there. And then we're going to start sewing down that other side. That's how you get those nice mitered corners. And you want a pretty mitered corner on the, you want a pretty mitered corner on the front as well as on the back. Okay, let's do this next corner. Again, we sew to about a half an inch, and I lift my presser foot, and I'm going to pull this around the direction I'm sewing. I'm going to lift my needle and slide it out, and then I'm just going to kind of put my thumb under here and tuck that back so that it lines up straight with the top, and then I'm going to sew down this other side. Those corners are just easy as pie. All right, now I'm going to finish sewing these up, and we will meet you back at the cutting table. Okay, so we've got this all sewn on. Normally it would be sewn up here, remember, but when you're going to do it by machine, you want to sew it onto the back. It's all sewn on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this around to the front. This gives us greater control because we'll be able to see exactly where that stitch is going. So I'm just going to start here in the middle of, of a side and just bring it on over to the sewing machine. This is actually a fun, um, a time to choose to do some fun things because you have, on most of your machines, you have some fun stitches that you, we don't get a chance to use. And this is a good place to use those. I'm actually going to use one of those zigzags where it, you know, it has all the little stitches as it goes along and zigzags. I think that's kind of a fun one to do on a border. It gives it kind of lacy look. Another thing you could do, this is a really fun place to add trim. Because you have total control over where it's going, like if I took this little rickrack, I could lay it along here like this, and then as I bring that binding over, it would give a little scallop edge to the inside of the, of the quilt edge, and it would just look really cute. You could use a tiny rickrack on there. All kinds of things you can do with the front, with the front binding, but let's head on over to that sewing machine and take a look at this, um, how I sew this down on the top. When you're sewing this down, um, there's, there's uh, some people use these little clips. They're like the little hair clips that, that uh, bend to hold this binding down. I actually just kind of turn mine as I go. So let's just stick it under here. And I think that's one of the benefits of using a two and a half inch binding strip. It's because it gives you enough room to fold that over. I'm going to meet the edge of my fold from my binding strip right along this stitch line. See this stitch line where I stitched it on the back, it gives me a guide on the front. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to sew along. And you can see the stitch that I'm doing is like a little um, scallop, kind of. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to stop every six inches or so and make sure that this is fold it down, meet it up with the edge of my stitch, and hold it down, and I'm just going to go that little bit of a way. It might be faster to pin it down, but I'm kind of a perfectionist where binding is concerned. 
All right, so here we go, a little more. I want to show you what happens when we get to the corner. And there's a lot of fun little stitches you can use on these, on, on the machines now. They just have so much to offer. So you can see that little stitch. It just looks cute. Alrighty, now I'm getting close to the corner. And I'm going to show you what I do here at the corner. I'm making sure that my... Um, I'm making sure right here, this is, I'm going to hold this down, making sure it's laying, covering that stitch line, and that it goes flat off the edge, just like this. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and sew down there. And then right here, I'm going to leave my um, needle in, and I'm going to pivot this. I'm going to lift up that needle, and then I'm going to fold this over. We want the mitered corner on the front as well as the back. Okay, so you can see the design coming out of here. And again, I want to show you one more corner. So we're just about there. We get right there. We're going to turn this. You want to turn it the direction you're going. And then we're going to pull this out of here. And we're just going to, I'm going to go ahead and clip these. And then we're just going to go ahead and lay this over. We want to make sure, hold this down. You want to make sure it makes a nice night miter. And look at that pretty miter right there. Beautiful. A beautiful miter. Then we slide that under our presser foot, hoping it doesn't move. And kind of, you kind of have to, when you have that much fabric, you kind of have to give it a little help through there. And it emerges fairly triumphant. Okay, I just want to show you one more way to do a corner. As you come to the edge, you can press this outside edge down and fold the top edge over as well. Either way will work while trying to form a miter. So there we have that right there and it's just going to lay down a little miter and then you can sew straight over that and pivot and pivot and come down this other side. And it will leave a nice edge either way. So here we are with our finished quilt. It's really, it just, it's a quick, fun way to finish a binding. It's easy, it's quick, it is a lot faster than hand binding, but really, you know, bind how you like. You can see this little edge. One thing that you want to make sure of when you do these edges is that it's something that will come out and grab that edge. You know, you can, um, you know, do a little uh, stitch right along the edge, or you can do a flower stitch, just something that will come over the top of this, so you make sure that you catch that and hold that down. This is a quick tutorial on how to bind with a sewing machine, and we hope you've enjoyed this from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.